Sometimes we don't do as good a job as we should at, at exposing what we're doing in, in Space Station to the, to the younger group or to the kids. Uh, you know, we've done a couple things where we've done some uh, pennant contests uh, on, in the U.S. side. We've done the Name the Node contest for, the, for Node 2, for Harmony. And, and I think what's really exciting is we asked the students to actually build a little mock-up of the node, so they had to actually take cardboard and, and tin foil and actually build a little a node that mimicked what we have on node two. And then we asked them to, to talk about what its function is and to understand what it is from an engineering standpoint. And, and I, the neat thing was that the kids really grasped on to the concept. that When they named it Harmony, I can't think of a better name than the name that they gave it, because at one end is attached the U.S. laboratory, at the other end is attached the, the Columbus module, and at the other end is attached the Kibo module. So if there's ever a name that fits, Harmony, where the three research labs of the world are united in one place, they're done in Node 2. And we could have had all the marketing agents and all the fancy old folks try to figure that out. But when the kids came up with that, and I think there were six or so, six or so schools that came up with that name, it was just amazing. When I go out and talk to, to school kids these days, middle school, elementary school kids, and I talk to them about the International Space Station, and some of them have actually been able to see it go overhead with its all its new shiny modules and its solar ray wings and they see this and they have, since they've been alive, it's been constantly orbiting the Earth and this research facility, this home for astronauts will be used to develop new materials, come up with new methods for doing maybe even surgery, for helping these young kids that may take some of that technology that we develop and fold it into their education. Maybe they're gonna be doctors. And so what we develop here, what they've seen during their lifetime is probably gonna be something that helps them help us as a civilization. Uh, science and technology is not, is not the only way to look at ISS. We have to look at it from the point of view that all mankind needs to work together to get there. So young people, they could be engineers, they could be scientists, they could be firemen, they could be policemen, they could be... All of those people are needed for some a small group of people to be able to build the ISS or to, go, or to go beyond. So people need to be inspired of what humanity can do, what we can do as a species out there, but it doesn't mean that we all have to be engineers, we all have to be uh, rocket scientists to achieve that. People need to be working all fields, but they can be inspired by the vision that, that what they do in their, in their field of activity, whatever it, it is, can be useful to achieve that overall goal that mankind will go elsewhere in the universe at some point in time. Years ago, we had uh, a deputy program manager named Frank Culbertson. Uh, in fact, he flew uh, on board the International Space Station. And, uh, and uh, in the interim between the Mir Space Station, that was a Russian space station, and before we put the first humans on board the International Space Station, he said, you know, I, I have a son, Frank Jr. And during that time, he goes, you know, this is the first time in his life that there were no humans permanently in space. And it's a big deal. Um, since that time, we have humans on, on board. So kids that were, were born after uh, 2000, uh, the fall of 2000, have never known a time in their lives when there weren't humans on, on, in space. And I hope that that's, that's the, uh, that is our future. My favorite thing is, is being able to sit with my kids at home on um, an afternoon or at night in the summer where you can enjoy the good weather, uh, clear sky, and you sit there and you are talking and uh, what you, you look at your watch and say, look up there, the station is coming. And they all say, what is that? The station? Yeah, the space station. Now we start talking about it and they start asking questions of what I do and uh, why am I involved and why they want to be, and they have an interest in learning. So for me, the station is, is, is a way to unite people and just sitting around a fire camp and, and discussing something. But it's a way, we have a star, a star, a bright star that is out there or that was built by mankind. There was a kid that I, I hadn't interacted with directly but indirectly by leaving a message on his 
friend's answering machine when he had broken his leg riding on a BMX bike. And his friend took the tape to school from the, from the answering machine and played it for his, his friend, RJ, who was reading two levels below the grade that he was in. After hearing the tape, after doing a little research and saying that, hey, he's an astronaut, he's a football player, well, I should study harder and, and be better. And this kid went from reading two grade levels below where he should have been within six months to reading on his level and then a few months later above his level. So working in an environment that exposes our next generation of explorers to great people, great wonderful things, allow them to pick themselves up and do better, which in turn picks our civilization up and makes us a better, a better civilization. We have the ability to talk on the ham radio to kids all over the world and they have some of the most amazing questions. Uh, there was one time when somebody called up and asked me how the nematoids were doing and I actually had to find out that we had nematoids on board and what they were. They are worms and uh, we are, the kids in this classroom are watching them grow but unfortunately we couldn't see them grow. But that's just an example of some of the amazing questions. Kids get grossed out a little bit that we don't have a shower up in space and so when you're up living on the Internet Space Station you might be six months without a real shower. Essentially you have a, a, a sponge bath is what you do every day. And yeah, you do get pretty sweaty because you're working out. But surprisingly enough, um, when the shuttle crew came to pick me up, it was one of my first questions, do I smell? And they said I didn't smell and they said my hair didn't look greasy so I was, uh, I was pretty happy with that.